Um, go, we're live on Facebook. Good morning, South Florida. We are about to begin Morning Tales. We already know that COVID-19 is changing people's life worldwide in many ways. In May 2020, the U.S. government implemented travel restrictions to all non-U.S. citizens traveling to America from UK, Brazil, South Africa, and 26 countries in Europe. Morning Tales is a four-episode interview show that shares special stories about how the pandemic has affected the lives of people living in the United States with family members abroad. Be part of this conversation on Thursday mornings on UIC Radio. Hello, everyone. This morning, I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you joining us on UIC Radio. Every Thursday morning, we gather together to chat, have conversations, and tell stories. Today, I welcome Ana Carolina Coutinho. She moved to the U.S. in 2015 with her family from Brazil when her, her husband was designed for a job here. She's a psychologist, currently studying her master's de degree in mental health counseling and work as a substitute teacher in an elementary school. She's a totally devoted mother of three amazing kids. Today, she will share with us how her life was affected by the travel restrictions during this pandemic. Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Renata. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, so working every day, studying for your master's degree, and mom of three kids, you definitely have your hands full. Yes, I do. But I think everybody else <laughs> is in the same position. Everybody else is so busy right now. <laughs> yeah. So I want to start this interview asking you, how often um, did you used to travel or your parents and friends used to come visit you before the pandemic? So um, I used it to go to Brazil once a year, at least. And my family used it to travel year another once a year so i think at least twice a year i had this sorry i think we have connection problem anna can you hear me Anna, can Hello. you hear me? Being close to my family. Anna? I'm sorry, I think we lost connection. We'll try to reach Anna again. Anna? Actually, uh, we have made before moving to US that we will. Anna, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, now, yes. I think we lost connection for a few Oh, minutes. maybe. Oh, I'm here. I'm right here. <laughs> okay. So we couldn't get your answer for, like, uh, the first question. No. How? Okay. Yeah. So... At least once a year. Here, another once a year. So... At least twice a year, I had this opportunity of being closer to my family. Um, actually, that was a family agreement we have we had made before moving to the U.S. That we would see family every year, and yeah, that was what I was expecting. But well, we would never imagine this pandemic and everything that that is going on right now. 
Yeah. And you being a mom of three kids that were used to having their grandparents and relatives closer to them. And now in such hard times, they are not able to have that anymore. Do you think they were psychologically affected? Yes, it was psychologically affected. I think no one will go through such a year without being affected. Um, the thing with the children is that so, like, all their activities were canceled, and um, among all the things that the kids are going through, not being able to travel, I think it's just one more thing. And although it's hard, I think uh, it ended up being kind of suppressed by all the other changes they needed to deal with. Yeah, and I imagine you guys manage a way to stay close to your loved ones. What options did you find? Yeah, we are getting closer through Skype. Um, yeah, the things we are doing what is possible. At the beginning, I think we were all pretending everything was fine. Uh, we were pretending that we were doing good, like if it was normal, I don't know, like share Christmas through Zoom. I think when we were pretending, I don't think it was very good. But by now, I feel that everyone got to a point that we do not pretend anymore. And in a way, I think by sharing our distress, even our loneliness, by being honest and vulnerable with our families, even at distance, I think we get closer in a way emotionally. That's what we have been doing here. Yeah. And uh, with all that's going on, can you still see a good side of it? Good side. Um, yeah, not related with the travel restriction itself, but in a broader way, I think there are some good things happening during this pandemic, yeah. Especially to families, like families with kids like mine. I feel families are getting closer. Um, they are, I don't know, enjoying the simple things. Like I see some families playing games together. And I also have heard about people who get to know their neighbors, you know, since they were staying at home for so long and they use it to travel. They, they have no idea about who were the people next door. And now I think they start to get closer to, to their neighbors, for example. So I don't know. I think the whole pandemic dynamic, um, I think the dynamic of the families and communities have changed it. And yeah, I see some good on it um, yeah unfortunately there is a high cost but yeah I see both sides of it yeah there's definitely both sides of everything and let me end this interview with a positive question what are your expectations for the future um, my my expectations I'm really excited about traveling again <laughs> I I'm excited about waiting for my flight in the airport for hours. <laughs> I promise I will not complain. I will be there <laughs> waiting and waiting. And I think it will be different than it used to be. But seriously, um, I just hope everything will get back to normal. Um, I hope we do not forget. I hope we can remember how it is, the simple things. Uh, I hope it is uh, different but the same in a way. I hope we, we remember how it is to take care of each other in our own house, how valuable some little things can be. And yeah, I hope we do not take all for granted, like our freedom, our, our wellness. I hope we do not take it for granted anymore. I think that's my, my hopes for now. Yeah, I think we all hope for that. So thank you so much, Anna, for sharing our stories with us today. I'm sure we have many listeners in, in the same situation as you that really enjoy your story. Next week, we'll talk to Danielle, a Brazilian immigrant that gave birth to her first baby five months ago and wasn't able to have her parents on her side. No, I'm going to listen to that. Thank you so much, Renata. Thank you, Ana. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, you, Thank you so much for listening to Morning Tales, brought to you by Renata Diniz. Tune in next week for another special story.